Hello and welcome to another episode of Sonic Talk. This is the podcast that talks about music technology and all associated subjects. Uh, part of the sonicstate.com thing. If you're watching this for the first time via YouTube, because we're trying to do uh, a live stream to YouTube as well. Normally we don't use YouTube, but this is our first time trying. Uh, let us know how it goes, if there's any issues or whatever. And uh, welcome and hello, everybody. And thanks for joining us. Also want to say thank you very much to our sponsors, Isotope. Uh, if you've not seen the show before, uh, they are giving away a copy of Ozone, which is the kind of de facto mastering processing plugin. Uh, great for uh, EQ, compression, dynamic EQ, limiting, all of those kind of things. So please stay tuned. They'll be giving a copy away later. There'll be details about halfway through the show, which is about an hour again, if this is your first time. So uh, let's say hello to our guests. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Ty Unwin. We haven't seen Ty for an extremely long time. Uh, Ty, as you know, took a bit of a holiday, or at least that's what he told us. Is that actually what happened, Ty? I suspect not. Uh, no. I did. I managed to get about a week and then then uh, someone got in touch about a job that I currently say a lot about, but um, a kind of 80s icon oh, going okay. back and doing some stuff with them. So it's it wasn't, it's kind of work, but it felt more like hero worship than work. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I couldn't say no to it, to be fair. So it's, which is, it's going really well, which is fantastic. Um, but no, the holiday has kind of taken a bit of a... A back seat. You know, Okay. Yes. Well, I well well Ty I mean, if you don't know it says composer and that is kind of Ty is one of the most uh productive composers in the UK I think lots and lots of minutes per day as you can see he's also got a lot of and, lovely synthesizers. And, and tired because everyone keeps saying in the chat room how awful I look and I look like I've been in a fight and I haven't slept which is not far from the truth oh, but that's not it's always nice. <laughs> well you'll have to just drop I, the re drop the resolution of your webcam. That's the way to solve okay. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pixel. Anyway, yeah. Ty, great to have you. Thank you very much. We also got Mr. Richard Hilton, who's over there in the States. Mr. Rich Hilton uh, is Noel Rogers Studio guy and also a uh, chic keyboard player. So uh, welcome, Rich. How are you? I'm um, very well, thank you. Good. Glad to hear it. You've been, uh, have you been up to anything you can tell us about since last time? I was just down in... Uh Florida, working on a recording project with an old friend, oh, where nice. in my MacBook Air was basically my synthesizer. Oh, yes, you were saying. How did that go? It went very well. Excellent. Well, that's all you it can ask, really. It didn't fall over. <laughs> we weren't working. Had we worked at 96K, it might have fallen over, but uh, where it hit the sample rate his sessions were at, it was no problem. And were you using the Apogee for that, for your, for your main interface? My interface for this purpose was a Motu uh, Ultralight Mark III hybrid. Ah, right. Okay. Gotcha. Which I quite like. I think it's a, a terrific product. It's a ton of stuff in a little light box that doesn't cost much and sounds great. So you just do, car I guess, you, you go carry on. You didn't take a case in the hole with all your recording equipment, right? Correct. I, it was all carry on. Oh, I see. I, I see a Gaz Williams as well. Let me just go and grab him one second. Oop. Just hold tight. Holding tight. I'm holding. Dead air. Dead air. It's up to you or me. Who's going to do it, Rich? Well, I did just quite enjoy using my little three-pound laptop as a synthesizer for ah, five Mr. days. Ah, Mr. Gaz Williams, how devil <laughs> are you? <laughs> Hello, sorry, I just only just got back, so I only just made it. Um, oh, well, so. it's always well. Uh, for those, uh, we're streaming live to YouTube as well, in case, because I should tell you, in case you uh, have a sudden bout of Tourette's or anything like that. So, uh, um, Gaz Williams, of course, professional uh. bass player, producer, uh, and music technologist, and uh, gig promoter, I think we can say now. Uh -huh. we're, we're yes. Playing. And I was thinking about uh, Ty not mentioning the, the fact that he is going to be, whether he likes it or not, performing on Saturday. <laughs> I, think, I think we did mention it, perhaps pre-show, but yeah, yes, I did. We did. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, welcome, Gaz. Nice to have you aboard. Uh, we've got, uh, 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 we're, we'll just crack on, I think, because uh, hmm. we have uh, some things to cover. So let me start with a video. I think that's the way that this tends to go. This is... You can't tell yet, but this is the Electroharmonics MEL9 tape replay machine. 
Which Hi, is... everybody. This is Bill Rupert, and you've been listening to the new Melmine tape replay machine from Electro Harmonics in New York City. The Melmine simulates the sound of vintage analog keyboards that Let's play... fast forward. So you... They're actually... There's some good sound qu- is well in. I'll tell you what really surprised me about this was the tracking. I don't play it all, but basically it's nine Mellotron sounds in an electroharmonics pedal, uh, which does that thing where you just take the audio jack and it tracks it polyphonically and does that sort of magic that we've started to see from, uh, I think Roland had done it with their guitar synth, and I'm thinking mm. that, uh, obviously, TC Electro, I'd really like to know, I'd be interested to know what kind of technology is behind it. And yeah, it, re- well, it was really impressive. I mean, it's mm. it, it kind of, to me anyway, I don't know if anybody else agrees. Uh, um, Gaz, because you mentioned it uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we, and I thought yeah. I'd just put it in the show. What did you make of it? Well, you know the genius who's behind this, the, no. the person who is... And I've talked about him before, but it's the amazing David Cockerell, him of the ah. EMS and then, you know, uh, the, 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 the VCS3. He, he was the kind of engineer who built that, um, you know, obviously with Peter Zinoffiev and um, Tristram Carey. But David Cockerell was the guy who put it all together. And he's an amazing guy. And I've, I've talked, I always talk about him, but he, uh, he designed a lot of the classic 70s electro harmonics pedals. Um, the Electric Mistress, I think it's one of his, the Small Stone, various other ones. Um, and he also was the designer of the EMS vocoder as well. So, ah, okay. what's, so it's quite interesting, really. Uh, he, he's a real advocate now of digital sort of, uh, algorithms. And um, now we've seen Electroharmonics pioneering uh, polyphonic pitch shifting. A number of years ago, uh, the POG, I think, was the fir- the poly polyphonic octave generator, I think was the first pedal to have that technology. And what we've seen over subsequent years is that technology filtering into different products. We've seen ah. the HOG. The hog, which has got the different draw bars in there, um, the pitchfork, which is uh, like a, a, a pitch pedal, uh, again, polyphonic. I've got one here that's called the uh, the ring thing, which is like a ring modulator, but it's also got a, pi- uh, a polyphonic pitch tracking mode. And it really does track very well. So what now I think that they've done is they've somehow taken that polyphonic pitch tracking algorithm and found ways to marry it with the sounds now the other thing i should mention that in that advert that we just saw a little bit of there bill rupert who does numerous electro harmonics demonstrations is in in my opinion the best gu- guitar effects demonstrator you hear her just that bit of uh, the court of the crimson king there played uh, i knew there would be a reason you'd like it so much <laughs> <laughs> you old prog uh, to the death, prog to the death. <laughs> yep, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think uh, in his hands, uh, he's a very, very skillful manipulator of effect. Do you think it in might be more hands, difficult to, to to use than he, than for the novice, perhaps? Then, yeah, possibly. But but I mean, you know, I've been doing lots of MIDI bass in the past week, and. Um, so there's a similar thing going on. I'm playing a lot of string parts and stuff using the bass. So you do need to modify your technique. Um, saying that, though, when he was strumming away on the yeah. acoustic, it did track very well. But with my uh, my ring thing, I can do that as well. You can really strum fast. So whatever algorithm is tracking is very, uh, very yeah, it's very impressive. Yeah, I know, Rich, you are a guitarist, and I'm sure you have a love of uh, um, those kind of sounds. I mean, as we know, G-Force, uh, Dave Spears is a regular guest, and their Mellotron, uh, Mtron Pro, has got a, a lot more to offer than just that. But this seems a really interesting so- hardware solution, right? Absolutely. What I echo everything I've heard so far. It, it's remarkable how well it seemed to track, and in some cases... It's it's wonderful in any case, but in some cases it sounded great, and in other cases it sounded less great. But <laughs> it's very cool that it does what it does, and it, it's nowhere you no, know, it's nowhere near the Mtron Pro or anything. But it's it's a pedal for crying out loud, and it doesn't even require any perceivable pitch detection outside the box. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's a really interesting idea. I mean, it feels like a, a kind of new. 
I mean, you could see they could take this into a lot of direction. I mean, because obviously the old uh, synth pedal, uh, the mm. micro synth, and all of these kind of interesting. There could be some really if they've if they've sped up that whole detection process. I'm guessing, obviously, um, you know, we've all talked before about that with guitars and higher pitches, it's much easier because the the waveform cycles are much shorter, so the latency is better. I mean, I'm, you start chucking in basses and much lower notes, it takes physically longer for a, a waveform to complete its cycle and to go, oh, that's an F or whatever it may be. So, But it'd be very interesting to, to test mm. one of these. I'd like to get one in for test and see maybe, guys, what you make of it. Ty? Yeah. Yes. Um, are you a good... You don't play guitar, do you? Do you know, I, I played got to quite a good standard when I was uh, really a teenager and then just stopped when I got to university and, and don't really pick up it. I haven't really picked up a guitar since I do have guitars, but I kind of just play them when I need them. I'm not, I never say I was a player at all, but, um, I can write decent guitar parts simply because I know how to play guitar, ah, but this okay. is fantastic. This is, this is, um, this is really, really clever. I don't care which, which way you look at it. And as Rich said, sometimes it sounded great. But even when it didn't sound so great, compared to a lot of um, guitar processor or, or kind of guitar synths or whatever that I've seen, this kind of, you know, stands up there as still sounding good, even when it doesn't sound so good. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's so clever. I mean, my old mm. guitar teacher had one of the very first... After the Korg synth, do you remember the do you remember the Roland one with the extra neck thing? Mm -hmm. What was that called? The, the GR seven, 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 seven or something seven like that. Seven. Full yeah. marks, yeah, guys, my, you guys. You get a bonus point there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my guitar teacher had one of those back in the early eighties, and I just remember. I mean, he was a really good player, and I just remember the tracking on it was atrocious, you know, and um, almost unplayable. But you're looking at this and you're just thinking, this is how is this happening? How is this just a pedal that's yeah. doing the you know, the pitch analysis and and mm. I just think it's fantastic. If I was a guitarist, I'd be you know, grabbing one. But um, Exactly. I can't imagine a reason not to, because just, well, just for that reason, I suppose. They yeah. start they started these this series a couple of le a couple of years ago with the, the is it called the B nine pedal? And yeah. then there's an old they, word, then, yeah. An organ one. And then they brought out a second organ pedal, like C9, I think it was called. And then they brought out one based on, um, like, electric piano, uh, Rhodes pianos, that kind of thing. They, so they, they didn't seem to kind of quite... It didn't seem to quite gel in the same way that this seems to have. Maybe it's just these sounds seem to merge better with the guitar, the guitar tones. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be worth pointing out that there's, there's a dry output on this as well, so you can use the pedal to you can split it, uh, and it's so you know there are and it'll apparently it'll do uh, bends, slides, even whammy dive bombs. It says according to the uh, the literature there. I I wonder, mm, I wonder what would so happen. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you played a Mellotron through into it. it, like. Yeah, play the M-Tron through it to see what it does. Oh, I'll be interested to see if it tracks. I wonder if, yeah, because, I mean, whether or not it... Or a voice, because, I mean, it, and how well it would track for vocal stuff as well, because sometimes when these things break on don't do it properly you get really interesting results i know that because uh, the ms20 is famously that was used uh golf rap used that on some of their early tracks and alison singing into it and because of the way it kind of like struggled to make it, it it's it made it sound like a kind of broken organic robot which was just really just sounded amazing so you might get these yeah. sort of those sort of similar artifacts which would be worth trying definitely Really want to try and get older one to check it out. Mm. Uh, I think it's about uh, it's about 169 quid or so, round about there that I've seen it for. So it's not you know it's not super cheap, but it's not mm. uh, super expensive either. And I don't know whether it's updatable. It doesn't say anything if you know you could stick maybe ex reflash it with other voices or whatever. I don't know. I mean, obviously within the amount of tapes there are out there, I don't know mm. who has access to what. Um, there are. Uh, you know, there's plenty of options for different models that have different voices in them. I suppose. Mm. Okay, doke. If you play, if you play a Mellotron into it, you get a guitar out. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. That would be awesome. Brilliant. Right. I'm now going to try. This is going to be challenging for me because I got so the, the, this next uh, video. It, oh, it's not even a video. It's. Let me see this if I can get this to work. So this is the Web MIDI synthesizer. Now this we've seen kind of HTML5 synths before, and they've been quite basic. But this, the thing that's really interested about the interesting about this is you can actually drag and drop patch. Well, I'm assuming I put them in the right places. I guess you go that way, wouldn't you? 
no, I can't. I, I, I'm I'm just showing my terrible amount of uh, <laughs> my terrible patching. Right, let's take an LFO out. Uh, LFO out. There we go. That's got to go in there. Surely there we go. Yeah. So there's a modulation source. So now if I play, I've got this little sequence, which is ghastly, but. <laughs> You can change the patches, no. so we set the pat. I mean, this is a sound effect. Is, patch. This, is this what you're doing on Saturday? Yeah, this is going to be my <laughs> fantastic. I'm loving it. But this, to be honest, this is kind of I mean, quite mind blowing. I mean, it's a ne yet another ad advance. It's by a chap <laughs> called GK two hundred G two hundred KG. I think it's a Japanese coder I, uh, or coders. And just the kind of thought that this is happening in the browser in HTML is the thing that kind of made me quite excited. I mean, I would say, yes, the a it alias is horribly at higher frequencies and stuff, but this is early days for this kind of thing. And the fact that we can recall and store patches, that's that's something that's kind of grew. I don't know. What did you think, guys? I thought for education purposes, just getting people going on a free uh, open this web page to see what happens. It's not a bad idea, right? No, it's great. And I mean, obviously... Uh Windows 10 having MIDI built in at the sort of OS level means, um, you know, Windows can join in that kind of... You know, Windows users can join in the fun now, which is cool, um, just by simply, you know, plugging in MIDI equipment. Uh, so that, you know, that makes it... Things like uh, Google Chromebooks and things like that suddenly become more... Viable, yeah, I suppose. Viable so. as musical devices. Um yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah. I think it's it's good. It's a, it's an interesting development, isn't it? And uh, the uh, I like the fact that they've kind of based the the look of it on. Uh, well, it looks is it a system system one hundred or seven hundred? What would you say? Yeah, seven hundred, seven hundred, seven hundred. Right, yeah, which is quite nice. Um, Sounds quite good, though, doesn't it? It actually does. It's, well, I, I, I mean, to be fair, that sequence is horrible. I did patch it up a little <laughs> bit, and I was able to get things that were a bit more satisfying. Yeah. I, yeah. I know, Rich. I mean, it seems... I mean, okay, it's not going to set the world on fire now, but you could see this definitely progressing, right? Absolutely. And if ever a time existed in my lifetime when it might set the world on fire this is it because so many people seem to have an interest in this stuff these days i mean just being able to use modular in any level so it is teachable and it is cool that it's free and uh no it didn't sound like all that much but whatever it boy, it seems to work but the whole thing about you know dragon patch chords goes back you know quite a ways at this point yeah, I would agree. I mean, the other thing that's very interesting about this, I, I know, let's come to you first, Ty, because there was a couple of other things that I wanted to... Well, I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a, a great idea. I think any, anything that um, lets anyone, you know, have a go on something that maybe otherwise they wouldn't get a chance to, uh, to, to look at and um, in the synth world is, is fantastic. And because modular is so current, so trendy, and everyone wants it now... Um, the chance that you know, kind of, someone can go and do this for for nothing. Yeah. Um. And and learn as well. That's the thing, you know. Yeah. Because that's the thing it, that I found one, exciting. One of the worst things is is that you know these things do cost money, and if someone goes and blows a load of money on a modular and then sits there for the first two weeks, going, "Well, what happens? And what happens if I plug this into this?" And I hasn't got a clue where to start. This is a good way to start and to kind of get a a, a basic footing in knowing what happens if you plug an LFO into a oscillator and and just learning basically and then once they've got a grip on this then then if they're still interested and the bubble hasn't blown you know the bubble hasn't burst then they can go and buy the real stuff mm -hmm. uh, yeah it doesn't sound great i mean i think if they get it so that the sound is better then i think it's a you know a real winner and also the latency isn't ridiculous as well i was expecting the latency to be shocking um and but it's, it's not. not. It's not at all. I mean, it's, you know, it's not great. But I mean, you know, I I came up with a happy, quite nice little patch, fairly quickly and fairly easily, and it was vaguely playable on a QWERTY keyboard. That's um, cool. I mean, the other thing I just bring in here is that they're proposing this kind of. Uh, uh, it's called uh, what are they calling it? It's called uh, Web MIDI Link Protocol, which is kind of like a, a text protocol, which you took so you can type your own sequences in here. In fact, I've got another page here where they're talking about how. So the idea is, you know, you would suggest that you wanted a, a MIDI sequence or MIDI notes or 
uh, MIDI controllers, and that's basically just simple text strings that can then be kind of ported between applications and between. And that sounds like another very promising concept. I mean, I hope that gains some legs because obviously this being new, it's good to be able to try and get a standard in place as soon as possible because then, you know, it'll just be it'll be useful for everybody and that and that's something that's also pretty interesting or not <laughs> <laughs> no no it is yeah absolutely i mean anything sure. that they can you know exp anything they can expand on you know there's so i think i get the impression i mean this isn't a, an area that i'm kind of an expert in at all but i kind of get the impression that you can kind of do a lot with this kind of you know kind of technology in terms of taking it to places that you wouldn't think of immediately yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that, God, that was just a crap way of saying I don't really know what I'm talking about. So, um, <laughs> hardly, Ty, hardly. Uh, but yeah, if you want to check it out, I'll, uh, let, me, uh, let me actually what I'm going to do here, because we've got the YouTube. Uh, I'll put the link here in the actual comments. I must say um, the YouTube listeners uh, or watchers are welcome uh, to you all. But there are definitely um, uh, there, there is a there is a. a, 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 a a, a few people who perhaps aren't where they expected to be and are just causing trouble. So that's interesting, and we don't get that. Uh, we don't get that round here. So, uh, so yeah, we've got, obviously got to figure out how we deal with that. But yeah, ninety-three people watching live there, and we got one hundred and seventy-five. So that's a, a bump a week. So it's obviously working. Increase the audience. Thank you very much. Uh, let's. Uh, well, it's probably time to do an ad. Let's do. Uh, let's let's say thank you to our sponsors. And uh, after this little section, you'll be able to find out a if you won uh, Isotope Ozone Seven. La in last week's competition or if you can win it in this week I'll have details to come <laughs> produce rich full professional sounding tracks with the critically acclaimed mastering tools in ozone and ozone advanced now, the latest Isotope innovations in Ozone 7 bring modern and vintage processing to the forefront of the music production experience. Updated for Ozone 7, Ozone's highly regarded maximizer features a brand new frequency-specific IRC4 algorithm that delivers transparent mixes with less pumping and distortion. Use it to smooth out an unwieldy mix or tame the kick drum peaks without affecting the vocals. The Dynamic EQ, now in both the advanced and standard versions of Ozone, lives and breathes with your audio, giving you more effective control over your sound without coloring your entire mix. Harness the precision of an equalizer and the musical ballistics of a compressor in one integrated processor. New for Ozone 7, vintage-inspired processing puts nostalgic tone at your fingertips to bring the creative color and character of analog hardware to your digital recordings. Glue your mix together and bring a natural feel to harsh-sounding recordings with the Vintage Limiter. Vintage Tape adds the dimension, warmth, and depth of tape saturation to your masters for a timeless sound that suits your creative vision. Brighten your mix, smooth out heavy low end, and add body with the Pultec model Vintage EQ. Tighten the lows, thicken the mid-range, and let the highs sparkle with the versatile Vintage Compressor. Right, uh, that, I want to say thank you very much to Isotope for sponsoring the show, and uh, we do have a competition this week, but first uh, we'll announce the winner of last week's. Last week we asked you to tweet the hashtag, because uh, we use Twitter for this competition, uh, Master the Mix and the hashtag Ozone7, and we have a winner who is called Flora Majora on Twitter, who just went, Ozone7, yeah! And uh, our, our super designed, uh, super computer winning picking competition thing uh, picked them from from last week's entry. So thank you very much to you. And of course, we do have uh, another competition this week as they give it away every week. Oh, that's the wrong button. It's that button I want. Sorry about that. Uh, this is so this week to win a copy of Ozone Seven Ice Tapes Ozone Seven, which is uh, the. Uh, Basically, it's a great mastering plugin. Uh, if you want to check the demo out, I should mention uh, isotope.com forward slash ozone will get you there. Uh, but what you want to do, if you want to win the competition or enter the competition this week, you have to tweet the hashtag on the mix bus, which is uh, all one word on the mix bus, and the hashtag ozone7, two separate hashtags, ozone7 
with the seven on the end to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. So enter by tweeting that. And also you've got some extra characters. So stick some more in there as well. We do read them. And I know Isotope 2 do as well. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to them for continually sponsoring the show. It's been great to have you aboard. Right. Uh, what do we got next? Um, we can't really. I mean, usually I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about Apple keynote speeches. But this week... There's an interesting piece by Peter Kern um, on, you know, what's what it means. Uh, obviously, Key Apple announced, you know, a bunch of new stuff, which not really all that new, just kind of tinkering with the models and stuff. But what's quite interesting is the amount of power that we're now seeing in these devices. And also, not only that, we've also got uh, uh, probably the biggest game changing. And I use that word very uh, uh, cautiously. And it's a tiny little piece of plastic that they should have released years and years and years ago. Yep. <laughs> and, again, and, the, and, and I'll tell you yeah. what that is. Uh, let me see. I think I've got the, this. It's this. Basically, it's that lead, which is your usual what lightning adapter to USB. But what it's also got is an additional light. You probably can't see that. The contrast is terrible on this screen. I wonder if I... Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, no, that just makes it worse. It just looks like white, but never mind. Um, basically, it allows you to... Plug in a USB device or camera connection kit and power. So you can power the thing while using it, which is the thing that's been stopping so many people from using Finally. this stuff live. Gaz, I can say you're excited. Yeah. To uh, Apple release something for 29 quid that you're actually going to go straight out and buy. Uh, I do want it, actually. But, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm annoyed that it wasn't there. I mean, you know, they should have launched that with the app with the ipad pro and it should have come in the box you know calling it ipad pro and not having that kind of connectivity so yes i, I think one thing that's also interesting about it is the fact that uh, if you're using the ipad pro it's a usb3 interface so you can so as of uh, i think okay. was it ios 9 they've kind of just relaxed a few of the uh of, of the of the sort of um you know it's like a locked system the, the right. just to to do with file transfers that sort of apps can have certain access to app, you know, to <laughs> outside storage, which is a ludicrous thing to think that, that that they wouldn't have that anyway. But that's just the closed nature of iOS. So what's happened, uh, you know, in the last, I think it's about a year or so, um, certain apps like uh, music apps, Cubasis, for instance, now in the latest update, uh, Cubasis obviously is the uh, DAW, iOS yeah. recording. DAW, yeah, it's yeah. a sort of like a uh, like a simplified version of Cubase that that now has the ability to uh, save or export its projects onto an external drive, which uh, you know <sighs> it's ludicrous. So we've had to yeah. wait so <laughs> yeah. long. For, for this. I, I know it's bizarre. I mean, uh, and, and ta but yeah. taking it back, I, I've got an iPad One here, which uh, I was using, and I was just thinking, I just need to get a photo into the into this iPad. And honestly, I, it took me it, such a long time to figure yeah. out how to do it. The, it was crazy. You, it is crazy, and it, you know, I've been banging my head against the wall for years with this kind of uh, restriction. But there is one thing also that I should mention that I've discovered now. I think this is the case. I haven't seen this absolutely hundred uh, percent, but is that uh, that the lightning power that's coming into that little box can then send power down the USB port. So you can power Ooh. sort of like hard drives and things like that, things that you might power off a USB bus. Okay. It sort of reaches that through. Now, yeah. I need to clarify that because that might, you know, uh, I have uh, I haven't seen that absolutely uh, 100%. Uh, that but that would be a major thing, I think. I mean, I say a major thing. In a relative sense, it's it crazy. It, it is crazy that that's the biggest news in many ways of this set of releases. <laughs> <laughs> it's big news to me, I tell you that. I know, Rich. Is it going to change your life? I mean, I could imagine. You know, I mean, assuming you've got a compatible device, which seems to be everything above everything ret iPad Retina and above seems to be, you know, the thing. But it is. It's quite a big deal. It's ridiculous that it's taken this long. I think, but but welcome, I suppose. Well, yeah, it's great. I had one. I had one for the old connector, and now I can have one for the new connector. Oh, did you? Did the, was cool. there one for the old connector? Well, not powered, but but I was able to get MIDI in, for example. Oh, ah, yeah, uh, but that's the big deal with this, isn't it? The fact that we can... Because if you're using this on stage, for instance, and you're just worried about your power running out... No understood. Longer. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a I'll probably get one. I have 
have to say it's an ugly old thing though, isn't it? Come on, they show off about their design and then they put this stupid big block. I mean, at least have it on the other end rather than having to have it dingle dangling like a stupid clag nut, you know? It's, uh... <laughs> Stupid clag nut. Stupid, wow. right, okay, hold on. Uh, I've got to make a note of that. <laughs> Stupid clag nut. Yeah, but, but I mean, look at it. You you know, you've got this beautiful right design, there. this thin thing they're going on about. It's the thinnest one yet. It's the thinnest one yet. And then this stupid thing, you know, put it on the other end. You know, yeah. Apple. They oh, do, yeah. sometimes. I know, Ty. Ty does it, uh, but seriously, this is actually going to make quite I'm a lot still of difference. Recovering from Stupid still recovering from stupid clagnut. That's that's made my day. Um, uh, I mean, it's just it's just an annoyance. Do you know there was a time when I have to, uh, no, sorry, I should point out it's great, it's fantastic, and it's I mean it's not it's not a huge game changer, but it, so many people in our position have been crying for this for so long now that um, it seems ridiculous that it's taken this long for it to appear. But there's just. I don't know. There's something about Apple at the moment, and um, they're annoying me. And it's not just me; they're annoying a lot of people. Oh, they and it's always almost do. like don't they? I suppose there's almost like there's an arrogance there, and it's there's almost a kind of everyone can scream and everyone can shout about what they think, and and they're just no, no, we're going to do it our way at our, our pace, and we don't really give a monkeys. <laughs> And this is a company that I've kind of supported for a long, long time now, and I've got more or less everything, you know, I've got all of their products and things and watches, and I I mean, I've got a, a, an iPad Pro, two normal iPads, two mini iPads, you know, it's a, I buy their stuff and I like their stuff, but as a company and as an attitude, um, I think they're just getting a bit cocky now. And I think, um, although I'm really glad about this, you look at what else they announced, and there's a lot of kind of wow, okay, great. Well, you say that. I actually think I think I, I would say that you know there are that th this is this this there are some really interesting things. The the new iPhone six SE, which is you know basically the iPhone five sized iPhone six, mm -hmm. has all the power of the S, but in a smaller package. So I mean that's a that's actually a pretty powerful package, and it's cheaper. Okay, I mean it's still premium Apple products. We know we know I was, that. I was a I was I was about to say the thing I have the problem I have with that is I completely agree because I mean I've got a success and I would I would much rather I prefer the size of the five I always have done I don't really like the success because of the, the size I like the size of the five you're right and having the processing power great you're right what frustrates me is they're selling this as it's now affordable and the reality is yes it's cheaper but in real terms is it really affordable I mean well yeah there is that of course do you know what I mean that's so I just hate the way that they just it's not affordable i don't know no it's not affordable not to not to everybody no, no it's not, not. And, well it's uh, and, I, I, as a, as it ever was i mean i think that's the thing you know apple's premium brand kind of thing is 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 a given you know and the fact that they they play that to the hilt is also a given and i you know there's not much we could do about that but but i think the thing that I find interesting about this set of releases is rather than going for the whiz bang wow, which they have with a thirty nine with a twenty nine quid piece of plastic, the the rest of it is fairly sensible, like the iPad Pro, smaller form factor, you know, maybe more musicians will be interested in that, or old duffers like me will probably try and get an yeah. iPad Pro because I can't but see so well, but but look at that though, Nick. With the iPad Pro, the nine point seven inch one, the ability to uh, connect that same 29 quid little dongle we've been talking about on on the new ipad pro it only works at usb 2 speed so the yeah, bigger why? is <laughs> the bigger the exactly. big one is set oh, so that's, that's a really strange decision that is that is but see, that, that's that's the problem i have that that that's a decision that's been made that isn't because someone's saying no oh, we can't use it because the technology and blah blah, blah. i power wise and processor wise has it's been sold the the 9.7 is the same as as the big one but to try and get people to now go to, to buy the big one now we'll make that usb3 and the others usb2 it's those decisions mm. that are nothing to do mm. with technology nothing to do with <laughs> well, money right. really yeah. it's just to do I, with you know i i just want to have you know. one last little rant nick now this okay because just to pop that <laughs> apple, that smug apple bubble, that, 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 that marketing spiel. Yesterday, I was doing a little rehearsal. I was recording it 
and it was recording into the iPad Pro. Now, for my birthday, I got the iPad Pro Pencil, which it, I have, I've been trying to see if you can use it for apps and stuff. And it's OK. And, and actually, there's no, uh, Notion, which is uh, a, a scoring app, and that supports the Apple Pencil. So that's quite nice. You can sort of write on the, the score, and it turns into notes, you know, right. with a pen. So blah, blah, blah. So I'm just experimenting with that, but not really using it very much. I was recording <laughs> a performance and bing, the Apple Pencil 5% battery, a little alert came up and it stopped. Oh, it no. popped the recording out <laughs> oh. to tell me that. I thought iPad Pro, come on. That's <laughs> that's not that very professional, was, is it? No. <laughs> that was a fail. So, yes, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, but you, should, you shouldn't have been messing around, frankly, should you? While recording that one moment when you all kept, you know, the musical moment was there, I don't know. But yeah. Ah, but yeah. Let, oh, that's the pencil, what... let the pencil run out, you know. Don't stop my recording. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, but if you'd been doing something really important with your pencil and it had, had cut out, you'd be moaning that the recording carried on, but my pencil stopped. Ah, well, there, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you know what happens when you don't let you you might be able to, I haven't looked in the settings, and you might be able to disable pencil kind of pop ups, but somehow I fear not. But if that does break a recording, to tell you that, then I yeah. think that's a really s silly design. That does seem silly. But um, let's not dwell. Anyway, that's the app. I know people get quite cross when we talk about Apple for too long, but I just figured that was worth mentioning because that little adapter is definitely very it's cool. It's a good, it's I a think, good little adapter. I think as with all of these things, they're probably going to be available March 31st because they usually announce and then it's by the end of the week. So uh, I'm guessing that's probably the case. But anyway, let's uh, let's get, let's get move on to some more things. Obviously, uh, next week is Superbooth, which is in Berlin. Oh, I seem to only have... Uh, if I drag that down there, then we can see the top of the screen. Superbooth in Berlin. Uh, this is very interesting for those of you into synthesizers because normally Superbooth is like a sort of subsection of major trade shows. Uh, Andreas Schneider, who is behind the the, the world-famous Berlin Schneider's Buero, uh, now called Schneider's Laden, which is a, a synthesizer, modular synthesizer dealer used by lots and lots of uh, uh, artists all over the place. It usually pulls together all the manufacturers and takes them either to NAM, to one of the halls, or to Music Mesa, where Music Mesa last, week, last year, it was actually the heart of it. This year, they're not doing any of that. They're basically doing their own show in Berlin at the Funk House, which is a GDR 1950s recording venue, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. I got the little video because I found a video, and Sound on Sound did a, a tour of it. And I'll just, just to give you an idea of some of the architecture involved... We it's a very utilitarian, based in, in Berlin, Berlin, for a whistle-stop tour of just a few of the countless rooms it's in the spectacular former East German studio complex. It's mm. just the Funkhaus complex is home to some of the world's most incredible purpose-built recording spaces, including Sau 1. Look at that. My name is Anthony Amazing. Okay. I'm wow. a poet. I won't play it all because I don't want to, you know. But if you mm -hmm. want to see that, I do check out the Sound on Sound um, tour because there's loads of really interesting stuff. But there's going to be a lot of uh, modular manufacturers there, lots of pop, uh, performances, lots of all sorts of things. But the thing about Berlin, Berlin has become very exciting for electronic music production. Seems to be a kind of focal point that's pulling lots of artists in. Lots of people have moved there. You know, people are, it's really kind of quite a hub of it. And I, I haven't been to Berlin for years. I know, Gaz, you've been touring probably more recently than uh, than I was. Have you been to Berlin? Oh, yeah. Recently? Yeah, great city. Y yeah, oh, amazing city. I mean, I've got to say, that Funk House is the best name anyway, isn't it? As yeah. I've said before, you know. <laughs> I think it's got I something to do... I want to go to the Funk House, you know. I think it's but... got something to do with, because uh, like, like Telefunk and, and uh, that must have something to do with, you know, there must be a, I don't know what it means, but <laughs> I guess. It. But, I mean, that place, I d I'm desperate to go there now. I think I'm going to have to go to Superboo. This sounds too good to be true. Amazing. What a place to have that in that. Wow. Yeah. How, how exciting is that? I mean, wow. Yeah, brilliant. This is great news, isn't it? And yeah. what you're saying about Berlin and it being a centre, yeah, fantastic. But, you know, you look Ableton and Native Instruments are some very kind of cool companies have been based there, haven't they, uh, as well, who have been integral in the in in the development of modern music so i think it makes sense that 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 this is happening in, in berlin and brilliant you know um but uh yeah i want to go i want to go to super well Moon, I, I, think. Can thoroughly, <laughs> I, I think you probably can i i, I, I should be rich I, i'm sure she must have played in berlin sometime not to in the distant future uh, in the distant past 
Is it as yep. exciting a place as I'm hoping it's going to be? Because I haven't been for many, many years. <clears throat> I quite enjoyed my time there. It was great and very interesting, you know, when you look at the history of the place and you're driving through it and learning about the wall and seeing parts of the wall that are still there. And, and it was just all very interesting to me. I quite enjoy I And so much, as uh, Gas points out, so much brilliant stuff. I think we uh, have to mention Steinberg when we talk about, and, uh, and the Logic team, the original eMagic uh, team. Oh, yeah. Great absolutely. stuff's come out of there. Uh, yeah, no, that's very true. Uh, just quickly to clarify in the chat room, uh, Sonic2500 has said Funken means to broadcast, German speaker here, and also Funk equals radio or radio waves. So I think. Uh, this is, uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, this is our chat room, which we've been running for years. So if you want to come over next time, uh, I'd put a link in the show notes so you can. SonicState.com forward slash live. Um, so that's what it is. But I, I wonder what it is, Ty. I wonder what it is that makes a city kind of create a magnet for that kind of creative and, and, and that side of music sort of side of stuff. I, I don't know. I have to say, when I've, I've never been to Berlin. Do you know, I don't even think I've been to... Germany, I'm not sure. Really? But I've, I've wow. never been. No, I've never been to Berlin, and I know nothing about Berlin um, apart from the references that you were talking about. Obviously, big Steinberg user, big NI user, Ableton, all of those. You know, if they all come from there, that's great. But in terms of outside of that, I don't really know. In terms of uh, cities where I think it, it surely must just be small communities of people just kind of getting together and surely that's what it can really be. There's no other reason. Is there really why certain things spring up from certain places or cities or... Yeah, I suppose... I it's have the same a, as music I, I, trends, got, I suppose you know, I've got a theory just... in, the, in that Berlin for a very long time was, uh, was, was kind of... Um, isolated so it was like an mm -hmm. island effectively so there's very little there's only one way in and out effectively down that corridor the motorway that was there and it was obviously a split city and there was a lot a very different atmosphere and i think uh, a lot of people used to go to berlin in germany anyway to dodge the draft in the in the 60s and 70s because i remember hitching around europe when i was in uh, I, I was i must have been about 19 and there were lots of people who were on the route to there because they would go to Berlin so that they could because it, it was inaccessible. So because uh, they had national service in Germany up until quite recently. So that was one thing that, that that would, you know, get you out of it or make it harder for you to be recalled or whatever. So that was what so you would end up with probably more more. Uh, unique thinking and kind of, you know, oddballs going there. So you'd end up with this kind of quite vibrant, probably off the wall community. And that might start the whole thing off. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. Maybe the, maybe that's part of it. I mean, that's a very uh, um, unqualified theory, of course, but uh, I suppose that might be something to do with it. But yeah, we're really looking forward to going. We're going with a team. We're going to take video stuff. The problem, we've got network issues because there's not much network where we're going. Uh, but we'll be going. We're flying out on next Tuesday. Uh, we'll be there and for the whole duration. And uh, we will uh, be bringing as much as we possibly can. We're going to try. Obviously, there'll be lots of new modules and lots of synthesizer stuff there. But we're going to try and do a lot of interviews and other editorial things. So we come back with a sort of longer tale of things. Because obviously, it's not that far away from now. It's only been a couple of months. And the following week is Music Messer, which is, you know, another really big show and we're going to that as well but that won't have the synth so we'll be able to cover perhaps more of the recording and more of the other things that that uh, synthesizers have rather blotted out this year from um, both nam and obviously super booth but uh stay tuned for that sort of stuff um gaz you should get on a plane i can't offer yeah. you a bed though because i've only got a twin <laughs> oh I, I i've i've got some friends there so i mean i'm interested in going now but I, to be honest that building i'm just fascinated by it now i'm just i'm just in love with that building i just want to go to that building the fact if that all that stuff is going on there as well you know well i, I think the thing, the thing about the funk house building as well is there are quite a lot of smaller studio rooms that have kind of resident producers and production teams in there so that whole complex is like a hive mm. of music creation as far as i understand so i'm really looking forward mm. to be able to have a look around mm. there as well and uh, what's interesting it's down it's i think it's sort of south uh what would that be yeah south uh west on the spray um and there's uh the andreas schneider who's a very eccentric and really brilliant uh, guy who's pulled a lot of these uh, smaller synthesizer dealers together over the years 
has uh, organised a ferry because all the hotels are further uptown in sort of Alexanderplatz. So we're going to have to get... He's got a ferryman who's going to be going to and fro from the <laughs> place. So the only way really to get to it is either a cab, which is a you know 30-minute drive, or on the ferry. So that's how it will be our daily commute. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm, I I don't usually get this excited about going to shows, but I'm very excited about going to this one. And Berlin... Did you ever see, Rich, that... Uh, there's a massive old... Uh, it might not still be there... Um, bus depot i'm sure i've told this story before massive bus depot in the center of berlin which is just a huge 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 concrete structure with just you know i mean it's like an underground it's not underground but it's a huge concrete structure and i did a gig there once and i just wondered if anybody else seen it because it was 29 seconds of full Mm. full bandwidth reverb it was a with a with a very Mm. tight funk band it was an absolute bloody nightmare No, I don't recall having seen that, uh, but I've played places with reverb times like that. And I'm pretty sure the gig is still rattling around up there somewhere. It's funny, isn't it? I don't know how you deal with that. I mean, do you turn it down or turn it up? What do you think the best approach is? <laughs> or just go home? Play less notes. You just get on with it. There's not much. I mean, really, the, all you can do is turn down. But if you're doing pop music, with all the amplified pop music, it's hard to turn it down low enough. Those spaces are really only... Uh, very tailored well to acoustic presentations where yeah. the length doesn't, you know, interfere. All I remember is going kick drum, and it was just like exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, wow. And then there was a power are cut, we, which actually was probably quite a blessing. Are we going to have that problem on Saturday with the reverb? No, it's a small venue. Well, you know, well, my reverb will well, probably. I, I've got to have so. I, I, I've got so much reverb in my live set <laughs> setup that I've got plenty to go around. So you don't worry. I could leave my tail <laughs> hanging for, for for probably a couple of minutes or more over the next set, if you want. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be arranged. I'm sure. Uh, but yes, right. okay. Well, that feels like um, did, I know there are a couple of topics in here that that have been sort of a little bit at the. Uh, uh, is there anything in here that anybody really, really, really wants to talk about, or shall we wind up? Those electromagnet magnetic oh, microphones. Okay. okay, yeah, let's do that. That actually, this is good because this is uh, this this highlights another post because uh, Peter Kern, Create Digital Music, he moved to Berlin not that uh, a few years ago, and now uh, runs the excellent site there. And he put, posted this uh, post some time ago. Electro uh rate. They're, they're kind of like electromagnetic microphones, so they actually record outside of the general spectrum. So, if for instance, if you got it records electromagnetic stuff. So I don't know if, if I play this, I think we'd be able to hear. Some of the sounds here, so it's really unusual stuff. So it's like interference and frequencies that are generated by other musical equipment and radio waves. And oh, that's a bit loud. <laughs> that's possibly not the best advertisement. No, go, for... this, the second one is better. Is the it? one on the normal bus? Right? Yeah, that one. Is that your favourite track? Hold on, where? Am that, I? Yeah, it's my favourite track. Yeah, <laughs> favourite track on that. Particular... I have it on loop. Hold yeah. on, SoundCloud I, I, has done that thing where it, it won't let me... dancing to it this very morning, actually. I was grooving, yes. right. Second track. Oh, that one, Electromagnetic Bus. Track, track two, side one. Clag- <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, that's got more harmonic content. Ooh. Actually, that's quite interesting. Nothing uh, uh, a 19 or 20 second <laughs> reverb wouldn't improve, though. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about these, Ty? I mean, are you the kind of guy that starts out with all the will in the world, <laughs> wanting to kind of go out there and record all of this stuff and use it in your work, and then it stays in the cupboard? Or do you think there's actually a purpose for this kind of stuff? Do you want me to lie? <laughs> I think you should just say whatever you want. I think you're exactly right. I think that's exactly what will happen. But I have ordered one. Oh right. Um, okay. Mainly because uh, in in my youth, one of the reasons or I got into synth music was I was really into um, the early electronic music of the fifties, lots of John Cage and Stockhausen and Berio, and you know, kind of my mum and dad used to come into the lounge and find me with a shortwave radio, just listening to weird and wonderful noises, and you know lock me back in the cupboard because they oh, thought okay. I was weird <laughs> and so uh yeah so I love all this kind of stuff and then uh and and so 
to to be a kind of have that on tap and um i've spent a lot of time over the years trying to recreate these kind of uh sounds again normally with shortwave radio and messing around with delays and just you know kind of messing with um feedback and and cabling and all that kind of thing oh, okay I, I love it i think it's a creative it's a creative starting point that's just a bit different and a bit unusual and a bit outside the box and so i like it right so, uh, is yes are they are they like my macro microphones is that this the i'm thing? not sure this oh. is the, i mean the electro schlush uh i i guess it that so they they have I mean, these, oh, hold on. I've just I was meant to run the web page. <laughs> so this is what they look like. This is, I guess, is the receptor unit, and then uh, the mics. I think are these sections here, which are kind of little uh, grids of PCBs, and then you have the output, so you can record the output into an audio recording. And these are other kind of accessories that you can get. So that's obviously recording some kind of radio tower. It's just, it, it's a really a unique take on the mm. way. I mean, I don't, obviously, you wouldn't use it to mark up a bass drum or any kind of musical instrument. No, unless but it could was you? To... No, it's just, sa- you... it's just for sampling, basically. That's what I have, yeah. one kind of viewing but it. It's just going to my... be... Yeah, sorry, mm. Gas was... Oh, no, my question is, could I record the gurgling, crazy comedy that happens in my belly? with it no i think that's oh. too sub so infra, in, that, that's <laughs> infrasonic unless you've been right. swallowing a lot of iron filings <laughs> no but, it's just a, the, the nonsense that comes out my belly at times it's just <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> and i want it i you know i think sod the synths just get a mic on that you know for sort of you know alien soundscapes and, well, I think and the like slow them down yeah create some granular synthesis do you rem- do you remember those those old Crown and um, Tandy PZM yeah, mics? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they would have been good. For you them. should just you should just gaffer tape one of those to your stomach and walk around with that. I've been plugged into an iPad. Rich, <laughs> absolutely. You look, you look like you were coming in there. Did you think that this has a purpose? I mean, because obviously, you know, as a recording engineer, the mics that you would be looking for are a, a totally different beast to what this would do. I mean, I wonder, you know, could you could you handle that going through all of those hours of recordings and go that's a good bit it's much more difficult to sort of de- decode and de- defragment i'd imagine uh the short answer to your question is no um <laughs> but the longer answer <laughs> the longer answer to your question is i call me old fashioned but i'm quite content to work within the audible spectrum in terms of the things that i'm transducing for any kind of recording or musical purpose however if this thing has any kind of analytical value from oh, okay. with respect to science or anything like that, that's fine with me. But listening through those two examples, I probably would prefer to have my teeth drilled. <laughs> well, that would probably make a really good... If you mic'd up that... It's not the sound of the actual drilling, but the sound of the motor. You could get something interesting. Yeah, it's, it would sound substantially like what those things sounded like. Yeah, actually. quite possibly. Without the sound of so, me screaming underneath. Ah! So thank God no one's been stupid enough to order one. Ah, uh, no. Well, the thing is, if you've got, if you've been using <laughs> no, that I kind of stuff in the past, I, that, that makes sense. Show me. I think they're about yeah, 100, I, I think they're about hundred euros. I have. How, how much were they? Hundred, hundred euros. Right. Okay. And so you know, it, it is literally just for sample material, and also just you know. As I said, I used to do it in my youth, so... No, that makes sense. I wonder whether much of that stuff behind you would be emitting kind of, you know... uh, That's the scary thing to me. You could imagine, you go, oh, this is fun, and then you're sitting in a room and you're just going, oh, my God, all of this stuff is is going through (laughs) me at all times. You know, is that good? I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the other way of looking at it, because as, you know, with all this around, you kind of... It's so unpredictable. I don't really think you're going to know what you're going to get, really. Which, again, that's, that's quite exciting. So would it work a bit like a Geiger counter? Could you sort of have headphones on and move around and, and I don't like know. listen I suppose to it? it might be I kind of get, I get the impression it's, it's not a million miles. I, I don't know, but I kind of get the impression it's not a million miles away from that kind of, you know, if I go and step, if I go and step outside, so, it, it could, yeah, it's, you know, that's be very calm one. and settled. And I don't going really around, know. Going around your house and just going, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, so maybe yeah. that explains why you keep... It, Twatting your head at that point there. It's <laughs> some <laughs> sort of... Because <laughs> you're being, you're I mean, being I walk, zapped. I yeah. walk around with my... Because, as you probably know, with the OP1, you get the little... The FM aerial. And I I put the OP1 in to record, and I literally will just walk around um, 
just with the FM signal, just walking around recording all the interference. And God, I can't believe I'm admitting this to anyone, really. I just, uh, God, this is really quite sad. No, but I, I do. But I, I think do I, that. And you know, it's, but I um, think the thing is, is if you find sources that are of use, I mean, then great. You know, that's what it's all about, ultimately. So, I mean, this this looks like a, it's just another alternative. I mean, I suppose the thing is, is you know, you can create. You can find things. I guess it might be interesting for granular synthesis where you'll be picking out because a lot of these these sounds are very broad spectrum, or you know certainly have very specific harmonics in that you could kind of pinpoint and just. I, I just think yeah. that could be. But I, I suppose the thing that you know maybe you could use it to inform your purchases. You know, if you go to the shop and if it makes a really horrible noise out of the power supply, I think yeah maybe it's not for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no? maybe, should, maybe we should get one so we could just use it as part of the sonic sonic state uh equipment testing regime yeah and uh, yeah or maybe not just a thought i do i do get weird whines going on from some of the gear at times yeah some weird electric you know sometimes i'm wondering i'm looking around for it so to actually have a device that sort of helps you sort of find where those sounds are coming from because they're quite, quite often power like adapters just do strange things yeah, don't they they do In, yeah near another one or but yeah anyway sorry just open up a whole new world useful. of terrifying kind of yeah anyway i think that's probably it for this week but i want to say thank you very much to everybody for listening thank you to all our new youtube w listeners uh, or watchers i hope you've uh, enjoyed that process and maybe you'll come back next week and uh, see more if not um subscribe i think if you subscribe you'll get a notification when we go live we may actually next week there is no live show because i'm going to be in berlin so i do have an interview of uh from bunner hafar and eric cheslak uh, from their west coast modular studio uh we talked to them about uh, the mother 32s banner hafar was the one of the demonstrators of the mother 32 at the launch so watch out for that that'll be live next well not live be, be published next week while we're away um and I, before we go should probably say uh thank you very much to isotope and isotope uh if you want to uh, remember if you want to uh, enter to win a copy of ozone 7 you want to tweet the hashtag on the mix bus and the hashtag Ozone7 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. So that's it. All remains for me to do is wrap things up and say thank you very much to my guests, who I know are very busy people, and it's very kind of them to give up their time during the working week. Gaz Williams, thank you. Yes, and just to big up the streaming of the live show on Saturday, I hope you've been mentioning it yep. Nick, earlier, <laughs> because this is going to be an interesting show, uh, and Nick Bat is performing live. I certainly am. And, and when is the last time you performed live? Last century sometime, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so exclusive, what's that? So it's going to happen so Saturday... Yeah, to hey. be fair, I didn't read. Yeah, it's Saturday, 26th of March. The live stream will be going online around about 7 o'clock through to around about 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll have all the performers and uh, we should be able to do some fancy stuff. I was doing, uh, we did some tests today and it's all going to, I think it's all going to work, assuming the network holds up. That's the, because here we know uh -huh. we've got guaranteed bandwidth. That's the only thing that we can't control. But yeah, mm -hmm. do come. I mean, it'll, if you subscribe on YouTube, you should get notified and, and it'll also be on the site as well. And the chat, the chat room will be live as well. So yeah, there will. I don't suppose we'll have much time to to view it, but you no, can we won't be able to view it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. So yes, just to reiterate, seven p.m. this Saturday, twenty sixth of March. Uh, we might have a bit of setup streaming test as well. So anyway, thank you very much, Gaz, and for that reminder. Also, thank you to Mr. Richard Hilton there, who's, uh, as I like to uh, fantasise, has got a limousine or perhaps a helicopter waiting to take him to one of those super-duper recording studios to continue his great works. Where he's a flown in. A Tesla. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, Tesla. Excellent. Yes. In your dreams, eh? Or have you got one? Have you actually got one? I've got dreams. Ah, okay. <laughs> I haven't got a Tesla yet. <laughs> anyway, Rich, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have thank you aboard, you. as ever. Always great. And, of course, Mr. Ty Unwin, uh, who we will see next weekend, uh, where this weekend even, where he will be uh, firming up his plans for his live performance. <laughs> well, can, can I just say, as much as Gaz has just big up uh, the gig, which would be great, can I just big down um, my slot in the gig? Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> I haven't performed for 19 years. Wow. Way, fantastic. Uh, 19 years. And at this moment in time, which is five o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, um, yes, I don't know what gear I'm using and I haven't written a note of music. So it will be fantastic. Oh, some, so, uh, uh, well, it'll be great. 
I'll tell you it'll what. Be no, it, it'll be hilarious. We hey, Nick, have... what about brilliant idea? I know, I've just said in the chat room. Uh, a projector. Who is it? A project. we yes. got, There is a projector there. We've got uh, a big projector. DSL said so we... you could use the chat room as a scene yeah. art backdrop. What yeah, brilliant idea. idea. I'm not sure how idea. it would work. We need uh, <laughs> uh, yet another device to plug in, but I'm sure yeah. we can make it. I'm sure we can make that work. That's a great idea. We love the chat ooh. room. Track room live. Yeah. Although, yeah. you wouldn't want to look up and just go, stop this awful noise, you're rubbish. <laughs> and I'm sure much worse, really. You wouldn't want yeah. to have... Or, or maybe yeah. the, the C word across your forehead, just by the way that... The, <laughs> that's just really not what you want to have happen, is it? <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, God. Hi, you crap. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is this rubbish? Yeah. yeah. Across your face. Fantastic. I don't know. It could be arty, I suppose. Yeah, but it's, if we can make like that happen, it. I think like that'd be it. a great idea. Anyway, yeah, thank I... you, everybody. It's been great fun as ever. Thank you all to the YouTubers who've been watching too. Uh, and um, yes, see you next time. Mm -hmm.